Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of May 24, 2020. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing week it is. It is as we start this week that Mars and Ceres will meet in the sky. Now, if it was just these two meeting, well, that would be a little bit different than what it actually is, thanks to a harmonious connection with Uranus. Ceres is an asteroid, and Ceres is named after Demetra, for one, and is where the word cereal comes from. So Demetra is uh, an ancient Greek goddess of the seasons. She was also the mother of Persephone, and Persephone was kidnapped by Pluto, taken into the underworld, and it was Demetra that was in so much pain, so much mourning over the loss of her daughter that she uh, stopped tending to the earth. And that is why there was fall, that is why there was winter. And so eventually the gods got together and said, look, we can't have this cold weather on earth, it really doesn't work. And so they struck a deal and had uh, Hades slash Pluto and Demetra slash Ceres share Persephone over the course of the year. Six months, it would be Persephone in the underworld, and for six months, Persephone would get to be with her mom, and it was when Persephone was returned to her mother that spring came and then summer. So this was a mythological understanding, of course, of the seasons and how we understand them poetically. But it's interesting to observe Ceres in the context of what is happening now. Not only is Ceres connecting with Mars, basically accelerating her energy, but that harmonious connection with Uranus does suggest fortunate turn of events. It suggests delightful surprises and overall empowerment helping us to understand ultimately what care is, what healthy care is for ourselves and for others, especially now in an accelerated way. It is, of course, Mars in the sign of Pisces, the sign of compassion that is heightening the energy of Ceres here and bringing it into the future, thanks to Uranus, bringing it into a new understanding for us all, helping that energy of care to reach as many as possible. But I did want to talk a little bit about the larger context of Ceres in terms of how she's uh, speaking with other power players. Uh, for example, she is a key part of this Venus retrograde season. Once we move into June, well, that is when Venus will start dancing with Ceres in tension. And so this is going to invite us to consider where heart and genuine care come together. But even further down the road, because you know, if you've watched me for a while, you know I love to talk about the big picture. I did a video on the decade ahead last year. And Ceres is going to be an important part of the defining celestial conversation of 2021. And that is the square that is going to take place between Saturn and Uranus. That dance is going to be ongoing throughout much of 2021. Ceres close in the sky with Uranus. And as I said, Ceres, it is where the word cereal comes from. She's also the goddess of grains. So what do you think is going to happen when you look at this? We look at the fact that uh, Uranus represents new technologies. You look at Saturn and Aquarius right now just having dipped into Aquarius until the end of June, beginning of July. That is when uh, Saturn will retrograde out of Aquarius for a few months. But Uranus rules the sign of Aquarius, and this is energy of the future, of new technologies, of new ways of doing things. Saturn is about tradition, doing things the tried and true way, and Saturn and Aquarius can be very scientific as well. And then you have Uranus moving through the sign of Taurus slowly and surely till the middle of the decade. And Taurus is the resources we reap from the earth itself. And so you put this together and it speaks to, in 2021, new ways of cultivating grains, new ways of agriculture, where there may be some resistance to it. That's what's coming up in the bigger picture, certainly. But let's put that into the context of right now. 
Where is it, for example, that people need food? Because series, grains, it connects to food. How is it that we can make sure more people have enough to eat? Are there innovative ways that we can do that, uh, that help people feel blessed with the bounty of nutrition, of nutrients, of food? I think some of that, some new ideas, creative ideas, new ways to do that, perhaps culturally we'll see uh, some demonstrations of this. I think that is what we're gonna start to see, especially this week, under the context of this week, early this week. I also wanna mention, again, as part of this bigger picture, um, I think a lot of us right now with what's going on with the pandemic, we are rethinking our relationship to the earth. That is not only part of this great pause that we have been asked uh, to participate in, even with these slow openings that are happening in different places on the planet, we have this once in a lifetime opportunity to really think about how and where we've been going as humanity, how we feel about it, where is it that we want to go from here. And a big part of what I think a lot of us have been thinking about, talking about as a collective, we've been striving to understand is our relationship to nature itself. That is part of Uranus and Taurus as well, because Uranus and Taurus asks us to consider the earth itself in new ways. And I know that one thing a lot of people have been talking about, I spoke about in uh, an interview I did with my friend Michael Barwick that I just posted a couple of days ago on my YouTube channel. And we were talking about factory farming and new ways in which, uh, whether it's grains, whether it's animals, how do we cultivate them? How do we interact with them? And how is that no longer serving us? Well, at the very least, it is going to be at the start of the week that some new ideas can start to present themselves to us as a collective and we can decide how to go forward from there. Mars right now, uh, newly in the sign of Pisces, is going to walk the path that Mercury had walked over the course of the uh, Mercury retrograde season that took place over February and over March activating the same points in the sky. Now, if we consider the pandemic, there are different ways to understand it. Of course, there is the larger social force, the way in which it is part of the shift of consciousness that is taking place for us all. I have been saying, uh, and I love talking about, of course, but I've been talking about for a while, how the Saturn-Pluto conjunction in Capricorn, the last time we saw that, that was the Protestant Reformation. That was a shift in consciousness as to our relationship with the divine. And that shift in consciousness meant that power shifted as well. It was that shift in relationship that led to the individual being the nucleus of Western society. Now that is powerful, that is a huge shift. And so we've had this conjunction again, 500 years later, and even back then, 500 years ago, there was also a plague that was part of that time. And I want to say that actually things like pandemics, things like plagues, they actually are part of our human experience. But when it is the case that it becomes something like this, a force, a social force, when it is the case that it lends itself to a great pause, like the one that we are going through now, it is usually because it's part of something bigger. It's part of some greater shift that is happening for us. The same thing happened 500 years ago, along with the Protestant Reformation came the dancing plague as well. So here we are in our current context. And Mars, when we look at the sign of Pisces and we look at Mercury, and I've spoken of Mercury being connected to health, it was ultimately Mercury moving through Pisces that uh, brought this uh, virus to the masses. It was part of what facilitated the awareness on a mind level, on an intellectual level, we started to become aware that there is this virus and viruses are connected uh, to the sign of Pisces, Neptune, Jupiter as well. So we want to see what's happening in these uh, different symbolisms to understand which way it is that the energy is going. I wanna give you another heads up. Um, and I think it's worth mentioning 
it is going to be next week that we are going to have a lunar eclipse. Now, this is powerful for a few reasons, not only because that lunar eclipse is going to start a rare month of eclipse season. Normally you get two eclipses in pairs, two weeks apart, and that marks eclipse season about twice a year. This time it's different. We're going to have a full month of eclipse season because we're going to get three eclipses back to back to back two weeks apart. So the first one is coming up next week, but I'm looking at how that eclipse is aspected, creating a tight, um, a tight T-square with Mars. And of course, Mars activating these points of uh, the zodiac that Mercury moved over. And, you know, I'm always one who believes that we want to use the sky to empower. I always like to focus on what could be good, how to use the energy to our advantage. And I believe that that's the case no matter what the celestial phenomenon. But what I am going to say is Sagittarius lunar eclipse. A lot of us are going to feel ready to get out there, ready to interact with others in the larger world. A lot of us are going to feel antsy. At the same time, that activation of Mars, it does suggest the need to be uh, taking hyper precautions, the need to be that much more careful uh, with Mars moving through Pisces, but intimately involved in this lunar eclipse because things could look very different. Things can be accelerated. They can change very quickly as well. And wherever it is that you are meant to be, wherever it is that you're meant to go, um, I, there's no judgment on my part. Absolutely. I can understand the desire more than you would know, the desire to be out there uh, and to not be home, to be out in the world. I can understand that very, very personally. All I'm saying is there's a need to be vigilant. There's a need to be careful. That energy is right around the corner once we get into next week. This week, especially at the start of the week, there's an energy of freedom and lightness, which can be very encouraging. But when you look at the bigger context, the bigger picture, what I hope is that we don't lose this opportunity. Again, the great pause that we are in is ultimately allowing us to decide how we are going to reset our lives. How is it that we are going to understand power differently now? I feel like this is a time of transition. It isn't just about you know the lockdown. It isn't just about the pandemic. This time of transition is going to take us not just from this year, but right to the time of Pluto moving into the sign of Aquarius. That is when we start stepping into that new consciousness. Right now, we're preparing for that as a collective. If you also recall, I've been saying decade ahead horoscope, year ahead horoscope, I have been telling you guys that watch what happens in March because it will be in mid-March 2020, Saturn will move into Aquarius and especially at the end of March, that is when Mars will meet Saturn and it's going to tell us something about which way the larger transit of Pluto and Aquarius is going to take us. And so what we're seeing is we're seeing resistance, certainly, right? We're seeing restriction, uh, fear. I think fear is part of the human condition, certainly. And so when I look at these factors and we're just getting a little bit of a taste, the restriction really came in once Saturn stepped into the sign of Aquarius and Saturn itself is a restrictive factor. Be aware that it is only another month or so that Saturn is going to be in the sign of Aquarius for now. And once Saturn moves out of Aquarius, I do believe that that's going to bring a, a little bit of release from what has felt so restrictive, the social restriction that a lot of us uh, feel like we are under. Mars right now is um, encouraging us symbolically anyways to think more compassionately, but also to be hyper vigilant. That really is the need because Mars can accelerate things and have uh, the virus spread that much more quickly. So we have to be careful with that. But that energy will also start to ease once we head into July and Mars moves out of the sign 
of Pisces. And so I do think that the freedom or the change that we are desiring, it is uh, right around the corner. But by the time we get to the end of the year and Saturn returns to the sign of Aquarius hand in hand with Jupiter, that is when we're going to start to see work change in many more permanent ways and so much more. And I'll be here to talk about it every step of the way. I share this with you now because my hope is that we're able to take the lift, uh, that sense of things changing rapidly for the better, that sense of being empowered that starts off the week. My hope is that we're able to utilize the energy of Mars to heighten compassion for ourselves and for each other to heighten a genuine sense of care for ourselves and for each other, because that is strength. As we navigate further, there are going to be continued lessons, continued understandings. And I know that it's hard and I know it's frustrating, but we will meet again. We will meet again. And that is something that we can look forward to. And my hope is that we can be stewards of this time as challenging as it may feel. All of it doesn't have to be challenging, especially if we embrace it and we embrace this time, we give into it and find ways to empower ourselves within it, which I know sometimes can be easier said than actually done. But I think that the understanding, the deeper understanding of the need uh, to be home, the need to embrace this great pause that we are in, it's going to start to show itself this week. And part of the reason is because Mercury is going to change signs right around Thursday. And it is going to be Mercury that moves into the sign of Cancer. Now, here's what's interesting about this. Um, cancer, of course, has to do with home. It has to do with isolation itself, but also family, especially family of origin, spending time on your own. There is a brilliant essay by Virginia Woolf uh, that is called A Room of One's Own. And it's centered around this idea of how important it is to have space in order to nurture your creativity, in order to nurture your creative voice. It is Mercury moving into the sign of Cancer that's going to encourage us to do that in some way, to embrace and be with our families to the best of our ability, but also to find ease and comfort with the space that we have had to uh, consider at this time. But this isn't your normal uh, journey of Mercury in Cancer. Mercury is going to be here for an extended amount of time right right into the summer and that is because as we navigate into june mercury will go into shadow mercury's going to go retro in july mercury's going to go direct just like mercury had spent all that unusually long time in pisces earlier this year now mercury will spend an unusually long time in the sign of cancer and to me i see this as one step forward two steps back i see this as okay yes i'm antsy i gotta get out there i gotta connect but now we gotta be isolated, we gotta be separate, we gotta stay home. And there's gonna be that little bit of back and forth or quite a bit of back and forth in the weeks and months ahead. And if we can embrace this time to the best of our ability, and I know it's a lot easier said than done, the opportunity here is to be at peace with ourselves. The opportunity here is to decide what that leap of consciousness is going to be and what part we are going to play in that. It is to more deeply commit on a deep level of soul beyond words to commit energetically to love and wisdom and the path of love and wisdom. That is not only an opportunity, but the great blessing and the greatest contribution that we may make in the fullness of time. When we look back at this decade that changed so much for us. Now, finally, one other thing I do want to say, and I have said before, you can't have astrology without the astrologer. At the end of the day, what we as astrologers are doing is we are interpreting symbols. And what we are truly doing is that we are revealing ourselves to you. We are revealing our worldview to you. Whatever kind of person you are, however you are, view the world, interact with the world, the things that you believe to be true about the world around you, that is what is going to show up 
in your interpretations. And so I know that there are all kinds of interpretations out there right now. Uh, some of them, you know, really run the gamut. Let's just say that. Um, bless all of us as astrologers in our own way and in a way. We certainly are all connected to each other. We all stand on the same very broad shoulders of the astrologers that came before us, the greats that came before us. But what's empowering and wonderful about this fact that we as astrologers are interpreting symbols is that on the one hand, we get to decide to interpret them with love and wisdom. That is one of our superpowers should we choose to embrace it. But the other thing is, is that in the process of interpretation, we as astrologers, we also get to embrace humility. When we're able to recognize the role that we play in interpretation, that I believe puts us in the right place as we glimpse the mystery of what the cosmos can reveal. And third, the other wonderful thing about this is that you, as someone who embraces astrology or learns from it or is a student of it or, or just feels a connection to it, you get to be aware of which astrologers you resonate with and what that may say about you and your worldview. And more importantly, to embrace the opportunity to examine where that worldview comes from. That is the great opportunity here to learn about yourself. It was Plato who said, we contemplate the cosmos to cultivate wisdom. That is the point. And we see this again and again in the ancients, in the greats. They talk again and again about how it is astrology that is the way of the wise. That is the subtext to the Picatrix, renowned uh, work of talismans and astrological magic. The subtitle is the way of the wise or the goal of the sage. That is why we do what we do. And so we get to, on the one hand, examine ourselves by examining the sky, but that is also true for you as a, uh, a fan of astrology or consumer of astrology. You get to look at yourself, examine yourself and to see why it is that you are drawn to the astrologers that you are. What is it that they are saying that is true for you? When you shift that perspective, that is where real self-knowledge begins. And with real self-knowledge comes real choice, true empowerment to be a part of the love and wisdom in the world that you desire to see. What I love about this week for us, well, look, it is in some ways consequential, but in some ways we really are on the precipice of the very big changes coming up right around the corner. We will be feeling it as we move towards the end of the week. This week, Mercury is uh, involved in several uh, types of alignments that astrologers call quincunx. And this is uh, an alignment that is more used in modern astrology. We don't see this alignment show up, for example, in Ptolemy's Tetrabiblos. However, it is an incredibly valuable alignment to take into consideration where it is that we have to integrate different energies in quick and sometimes surprising ways. But that is also an opportunity to take a leap forward as well as Mercury is making this type of alignment, not only with Pluto and Jupiter close in the sky, but also with Saturn as well. We get to look at the depth of what we are thinking about, but also to find more stable and mature ways of understanding. We get to examine where we are in the most practical sense and move ourselves in solid ways forward, ways that help to cultivate Yes, love, to cultivate wisdom, to cultivate self-knowledge as well. But more importantly, with Saturn, Quincunx, Mercury, it is the opportunity to cultivate self-respect. That is one of those intangibles, but it is so valuable. You may not know if you don't really have it, but you know when you do. And self-respect is often earned. It comes through the actions that you take. 
It is one thing to look at morality based on who you are. It is another thing to consider morality based on what you do. My hope for us at this time is that we root our sense of what is right and wrong through choosing to do the most loving and the most wise for ourselves and each other. Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you love about this week? Let me know in the comments below. I love reading you guys. And of course, if you want to know how all this wonderful stuff this week speaks to you in your sign, log on to NadiaShaw.com. Sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week. Unlimited access to special horoscopes like the Saturn special horoscopes, looking at Saturn moving through Aquarius for your sign, like the Venus retrograde special horoscope looking at what that'll mean for you and your sign. Well, all of that is in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. And specials are also available for download on my website, NadiaShaw.com as well. Thank you for your love, for your trust, uh, for embracing what it is that I have to share. It means so much to me. Thank you. Books, you know I got books, right? <laughs> so Prayers to the Sky is out now uh, on Amazon and anywhere books are sold. The body and the cosmos, right? This talks about Plato and applies uh, some ideas of Plato to an astrological sky. I hope you love that as well. I have my original book, Astrology Realized, and which is a, a beginner's guide to reading charts. And the universe is wise and loving the nodes of the moon. Now this is available for advanced uh, copy purchase just for a couple of more days. Uh, advanced purchase is going to close in the middle of this week, so coming up very soon. If you purchase the advanced copy through me, you get over $200 worth of free gifts along with it. Uh, and I hope you absolutely love it. This book will be available wherever books are sold August 22nd. So coming up way forward into the future, but as you and I know, the future, you blink and it shows up. But yes, if you want the advanced copy, a signed copy of this book from me, plus gifts, which include a, a magnet that says the universe is wise and loving. It's a brand new design. If you've ever been to my live events, you know I like to give little gift bags, uh, and I always like to give a magnet that says the universe is wise and loving. Well, this is a brand new design of that magnet, uh, and so I hope that you absolutely love it, and, uh, and thank you. Thank you for the love and support that you show for my books. Prayers to the Sky and The Body and the Cosmos both debuted as number one new releases in New Age Astrology on Amazon. And uh, that was a career high for me. So thank you. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you. And Synchronicity University is coming up summer school. And I have extended the choose your own tuition rate as low as just $5 a class. Plus, keeping in mind where we are culturally, I know that there are some people who may need uh, partial or full scholarships. Applications are available for that as well. But as I said, as low as $5 a class if you sign up before the class begins. And classes will begin in June, right around the corner. So if you are so inspired, click on the link below. Uh, for Summer School of Synchronicity University, we are gonna be looking at uh, Uranus. We're gonna be looking at Neptune. We're gonna look at Mars in greater depth as well. So I'm looking forward to exploring more of these outer planets with you. And also coming up this week on Tuesday, I do have an event happening uh, with the NCGR Stargazers Group Las Vegas. I was supposed to be in Vegas. Obviously, I'm not. And so I really wanted to be in Vegas, but that's OK. I get to be there virtually, which means more people get to join me. And it is by donation. And so we can have as many people as want to show up. I'm going to be talking about the great conjunction that happens at the end of this year um, and the importance historically of the great conjunction, the importance to it for what we have to look forward to as part of stepping into this brand new uh, Aquarian age, information age, what that next level of consciousness is going to be for us as humanity. Uh, what an important symbol. Jupiter meeting Saturn in the sky is. Uh, so, so much more. We're going to talk about that in that class. So that's this Tuesday. And so you can sign on as well. And links are in the description below. 
Finally, you can get some insights into my take on your natal chart, on your unique astrology chart. And that is thanks to my partnership with Cosmogram. Uh, you can go onto the Cosmogram website, order a natal chart reading with explanations written by me. Within hours, you will get a PDF download that you can have and enjoy forever. It is your natal chart and the explanation of it, my interpretation, written out for you to cherish and learn from always. I hope that you absolutely love it. And thank you. Thank you so much for this moment with you. Thank you for the privilege of getting uh, to explore the cosmos with you week after week as I have been here for so long. And every moment of it feels new. Every moment of it does feel like such a privilege to be some part of affirming love and wisdom in the world. You being here, you participating in that, it just means so much, not only to me, certainly, but I believe it means so much to the world and it means so much to the future as well. Thank you. And thank you again for watching. It'll be a great week. Enjoy.